Hey guys, welcome back to Facebook Live with Manta. Thank you for joining us during your lunch hour or if you're on the West Coast, your brunch hour. Uh, we've got our email marketing manager, John Line, here to speak with us. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. We're gonna be talking about how email fits into your marketing campaign. So last week we talked about why you need to have a marketing plan, even if you have zero budget, and what kind of marketing campaigns you can implement. Well, now we want to talk about how email really fits into that and enhances those campaigns that you have, whether they're paid campaigns or unpaid campaigns. And so we're going to defer to John Line. First, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you do want to hear from us every week, make sure you hit the follow button below us so you get notified when we go live. We'll be live every Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. So first question we have, um, how successful have you found email to be in marketing campaigns? Just give me the overall, like, why we need to do this. Yeah, absolutely. So email is actually if not our strongest, one of our strongest marketing vehicles at Manta. And um, I think it's, it'd be easy for me to say, oh, it's because I'm a great email marketing manager. But, <laughs> Which you are, <laughs> but. <laughs> absolutely. However, it's, it's a really good vehicle for anybody, whether you're a professional or you're a beginner. And the reason is kind of simple. Um, if you think about it, uh, it's one of the, the tools that everybody has yeah you know some people have Facebook some of your customers have Twitter some of them have Instagram but I bet nearly all of them have email and so it's just this vehicle that we can reach that audience any time of the day with a smartphone they're sitting there at a traffic light and they're checking their email oh, I'm guilty of that you're I'm sure you're guilty of that and your customers are certainly guilty of that so Don't do that. yeah uh, we do not recommend that but um, you know, it's it's very simple. It's it's just this tool that is there for everyone. All of your customers have it. It's there on their phones, their iPads, uh, their desktop computers. They're checking it at work. Um, and so, you know, we've had really good success. It's one of our higher converting marketing channels. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if we do any marketing campaigns where email is not at least. A small piece right. of the puzzle. Right. You know, it's really good to, um, if you've got an offline campaign, you can support it with email. Mm -hmm. If you've got a social campaign, you can support it with email. And so it's just one of those things. It's another way to touch your customer. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very templatized now. It's something simple that we would recommend you doing and adding to your marketing campaign. Okay, so hopefully you're convinced that you do need to have email. So now we're gonna get into how to implement that and, and really get into the details now. Okay, so personalization. We hear about personalization a lot. How can you create personalized emails mm -hmm. and how does that give your emails an advantage? Sure, so just as we, we just talked about how many people have email, mm -hmm. well just as many people or brands or companies are sending email. So it's really important to stand out in that inbox. Um, and one of those ways is personalization. And there's many levels of personalization that you can get into. And uh, whether you're, you know, I think it comes with your experience. So if you're a beginner, something as easy as using a first name in the email, you know, making that one-on-one -on -one connection yeah. like you know your customer. Like it starts as simple as that first name. So, hey Bob, you know, we haven't seen you in a while. Or, you know, if you're a little bit more experienced, you've been doing email for a while and you're good at knowing your customer, you can do things like, hey, I know you bought a sweater last month. Um, right. And so it just, it's a little more personable than, you know, doing a direct mail campaign or something. You can use your data, you know, collect this information, keep good records. Um, you know, if you know they come in every Monday, you know, maybe it's a Monday sale and you, you send a note to them about, hey, come in this Monday and get 10% off. Um, so it's just, there's varying levels of it, but I really recommend at least starting out with that first name or, you know, something you know they have been looking at in your store or a service you know they've get, purchased from you before. You know, give them a little extra incentive to, right. to come down. So 
uh, I'm gonna go a little off script and you guys can send your questions in too. We're gonna put John in the hot spot. Oh, no. What's your favorite like personalization that you've ever seen? Like what email have you oh, received man, that you were really? like, that was so cool. Cause one time you, you sent me uh, an invitation that had like a video in it. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a paper invitation that had video inside the paper invitation. I just thought that was so cool. Oh, that was a direct mail piece, but right. you, you see these kind of cool things all the time. What can you think of? Um, so I actually, I can't remember the brand, but it was after a purchase that I made. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a thank you note and you know a confirmation, but in that, there was a nice personalized video. And this, they didn't need to know my name. They didn't need to know um, who exactly I was but it was personalized in like it, the video in the email linked to the website and it said, hey, thanks so much for your purchase. You know, we really appreciate uh, everything you do for us. You know, even this small purchase was important for our company and we know it's important for you. So anytime you need to reach out, give us a call. I'm here, um, I'm standing by the phone and 24 seven, just reach out, leave a vo- voicemail. And that really was a nice touch where it's like, wow, you know, and like, I didn't think that they knew me personally, but I knew they were there for me, and it was, um, you know, just like a simple touch to make me feel welcomed, and that my purchase was important to them. I like that. Yeah. So that's another great idea that you guys could implement uh, within the email. So okay. So can you give us examples of how you're going to segment your email lists, create your marketing campaign targeting? So that was a lot of lingo. How do we pick out the right people to email to, to make sure that we get the biggest bang for our buck? Sure. Yeah. I think there's a term in the, in the business, if you will, the batch and blast, which is take everybody on your list and send them the same information. Right. And why don't we do that? Right. We, you know, I think a lot of people used to do that and, um, you know, while it's great to get, you know, let's say 10% of your people to interact with that email like what if we could save a little time and energy by targeting a specific audience and um, get a higher percentage of people opening your emails or clicking through your emails or the ultimate goal buying your product or service you know target people that you know would be interested in this Um, I mentioned the idea of someone who's purchased a particular service from your company before like you know they were interested in that service, they paid for that service, hopefully you made them smile, you delighted them, so why not invite them back for that same service again? You know, if they're somebody who bought a year ago but you haven't seen them in a while, why not target those types of people and say, hey, you know, we're running an offer for 10% off our service. You know, whether it's cutting grass or a dry cleaning service, you know, target people that you know they've uh, interested in a particular item mm-hmm. um, and they haven't been back in a while okay. and you know you don't want the yeah, picture sending that same message to someone who came in yesterday and just bought that service for full price right. yeah, you know they're likely not going to come in maybe it'll irritate them a little <laughs> maybe bit maybe they'll so, call you and ask you for the discount yeah, exactly <laughs> uh, it could be you know an accounting headache for you later on yeah you know? um, so you want to you know, really think about your segments and who's really going to be interested in this email and not just send it to everybody because, you know, while there's a good ROI on email, it, there is a cost to it. You know, Mm -hmm. it's just like sending a direct mail piece, you know, every time you send it, it does cost something. So, you know, target those people and make it really a good return on your investment. I like that. I like that. And you can do that even by like what you know about the person. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you're going to target your women's wear stuff to women, or you're going to target your, uh, by generation. So, Hey, got younger customers. I'm going to target them using gifts. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, you know, businesses like ours, we can get really into the weeds in this data, yeah. but it's something, start with something simple on, on, um, on your side, you know, collect. If you're collecting email addresses at a cash register, ask for one more piece of information. Mm -hmm. First name, last name, gender. Or if you know your customer that well, you don't even have to ask them something like gender. Yeah, just make sure you write it down. Exactly. You know, keep track. Know your customers, whether it's, you know, personal one-to-one or you're asking them questions at the time of sign-up. Yeah, I 
Absolutely. Yeah. You refer to that later. Okay, so we hear the word mobile friendly a lot, and especially in regards to websites. Um, what does a mobile friendly email mean, and do we need one? Yeah, so a mobile friendly um, email is similar to a mobile friendly website. It's you want to make your email emails readable, digestible on a smartphone or on an iPad. Um, and what that does is um, take picture a two column newspaper article, right? You know, and that's going to be hard to read on a small screen. So what you do is you you're able to, you know, stack those two okay. columns into one. Right. Similar to an email, you have an image on the left, text on the right. Hard to read on a smartphone unless you make it mobile responsive, and you stack that image on top of the the um, copy. But that sounds really challenging. Okay. However, if you're using an email service provider, something like um, Mailchimp, for instance, or Constant Contact, they build those templates for you. You know, and and that's really the key uh, to sending these emails is if you can, you know, look around for some email service providers, and they'll do the heavy lifting for you. Um, you know, they have templates that are already coded for mobile so that your users can read them. Um, some things you can do if you're not using one of these uh, email service providers, uh -huh. use a lot of white space, meaning, right. you know, very clean, simple. Um, if you have, if you don't have a button in your email and you're sending out a Gmail, like, make that clickable link have plenty of space around it so big thumbs like mine can click on it. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure it's really easily readable. Don't use crazy colors. You just, just picture yourself on your own email, on your own smartphone, and say, what's important to me to be able to, to click through? And a lot of it's just simple white space, mm. um, clean, uh, simple colors. And, okay. and that's the key to start with. And then if you get into an email service provider, Make sure they have mobile responsive templates. Most of them do now. It's really kind of uh, well known in the business. It's a popular thing. So um, don't get scared when I say to code. Yeah. You don't have to code anything <laughs> on your own. Just use some templates that are um, out there for your use. Okay, great, great advice. Yeah, I always hate it when I get an email and I have to like zoom really exactly. crazy. Exactly. Make it real easy for them <laughs> to get to your goal. You want yeah. to get them to your website or yeah. click on a coupon. That's the key. Okay, so now we're the, now that our small business owners are sending out these emails, it's part of their campaign, we've targeted the right people, we're mm -hmm. calling them by their first name, how do we measure whether or not it's working? What are some sure. benchmarks that we have to know whether th these, these emails are performing well? Sure, um, so I think the easiest thing to start with is your open rates, okay. your click-through rates. So how many people that you, the percentage of people you sent to, how many of them are opening your email. Okay. So that's the key, getting that message in front of their yes. eyes and they're digesting that message or that coupon, whatever it might be that you're promoting. Um, then it's, the next step is the click-through rate. Um, so how many of the people receiving your emails are clicking through and, um, you know, clicking on the action that you want them to do. So it, it seems overwhelming, but when you really break it down into steps, so how many are reading it? Mm -hmm. How many are taking an action? And then ultimately, you know, you really want to see whatever your goal is, you want to get that benchmark. So um, let's say it's purchasing an item. Right. How many people on your list actually went through and purchased the item? Um, you know, and that can see, seem overwhelming. You know, if you don't have a website, um, perhaps you've sent them a coupon. Mm -hmm. You know, keep a code on there, collect those coupons, and keep track of how many people actually delivered and came into your store, um, yes, use yeah. your coupon. That's the ultimate goal. So, you know, it's each step, if you can look at each step, you're going to learn a little bit more. So, like, if not a lot of people open your email, work on your subject line, work on um, that messaging, that first step. Mm -hmm. If there's folks who are opening but they're not clicking through, maybe your offer is not good enough, mm -hmm. maybe the messaging needs some tweaking. Um, and then finally, you know, if they're not taking that final action of purchasing or scheduling an appointment, maybe there's something in there that you can offer them, you know, something a little more enticing. Right. Um, you know, it can be as simple as um, 
the way you're speaking to them. You know, so again, the good thing with an ESP or email service provider is they have tools to help you test and learn. Right. You know, you know, it seems daunting, but they do make it simple. So I do recommend, you know, taking a look at those and um, setting up some tests, something simple, start real easy. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. Um, you don't want to, you know, every additional step you take yeah. leaves room for error. So start simple and it'll make you feel good about yourself and it'll make you learn something about your messaging and how to improve things as you go forward. Are there any industry benchmarks that you can give? Like throw out a couple of numbers. For so us. I think if you're looking at open rate, it's usually around a 20% for a standard promotional email. Um, click through rates, you know, each step you would you have in there goes down a little bit. Okay. I'm trying to think click through rates are probably somewhere in the three to four percentage area, uh, maybe a little lower. Um, so you know if you can hit any of those benchmarks or exceed them, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at a promising performance of, of your marketing campaign. And there's websites out there, Campaign Monitor is one that throws out stats. Yeah. Um, Litmus is another. They'll throw out stats that you can compare yourself to. And then you can dig a little deeper into your own industry, what's going on. Um, I'm sure there's stats about small businesses specifically and how their emails perform. Um, you know, Constant Contact um, is another one, MailChimp. That's where a lot of small business owners go to. And nice. they have a lot of data that will help you, you know, see like, what do I stack up against? How am I doing? Um, and then give you, you know, goals to reach. Right. Okay. Uh, great advice. So um, if you guys have any other questions about that or what's specific for your business, you can go ahead and put that in the comments. Uh, just tell us what your industry is and we'll try and help you think of ideas or um, work with you uh, to make your emails better. Fire them over. Okay. So you and I have worked together uh, quite a bit. Yep. Um, using email to build a social following. How can small business owners use some of those same tactics that we do to really help them build their social media following, their Facebook followers um, with email? Sure, yeah, and I, you know, we mentioned it before, I think email is just a small piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So you wanna use your tools, um, you know, cross promote, right. if you will. So, more touch points, exactly. more ways that they can hear from you. Yeah, yep. and so, so uh, as you know, we have uh, a social media campaign coming up yes. that's actually live and running right now. Yep, we, we went live early just for you guys. <laughs> and so it's called uh, Small Biz Love. Yes, if you use the hashtag Small Biz Love, you can show off your love for your small business, your products, your customers, uh, using a photo of them, and just submit it on Facebook, or if you're on our Facebook page, we have a tab that you can submit that on. Um, so use that hashtag SmallBizLove and you can be in our campaign uh, to win a $500 sweepstakes. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And so with that campaign, we're going to use email to promote it. Um, again, it's just not everyone's on Facebook all the time right. or on Twitter. Right. But a lot of people, if they're not there, they're likely on their email. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll promote that uh, social campaign in an email give them instructions on what to do, mm -hmm. push them to um, either our page where you can upload your photo, we'll push them to Facebook or Twitter, and so what we're doing is just cross-promoting, um, yeah. you know, so that we can hit them in multiple areas. Um, you know, again, if they're not on social, we'll get them with their email. Yeah, and we wanna get $500 to you, yes. so here, here's a couple channels on which to do yeah. that. <laughs> we love small business, we know yes. you love your small business, um, and so we wanna make sure we thank you guys for what you do. Yes. And so um, we'll cross promote this in email, so if you're on our email list, you will be, you know, be on the lookout, so if you yep, don't- Yep, Monday. <laughs> on Monday, be on the lookout, and we'll give you steps on how to do that and where to go. And um, so, yeah, if you can't stop right now, you don't want to shut down this Facebook Live video right away. Understandably. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure to send you some instructions in email. Yeah. And so, and you can also do it the the conversely. You know, if you have a blog or you have promotions in your email, use your social feed to drive to, to those. drive to your email list. You yep. know. Um, in Facebook, you can actually use that sign-up button up at the top. Um, uh, 
it, if you've got a business page, there's a button and you can direct that for people to sign up for your email list. So if they want to hear more from you and you can use that button in that way. Yeah, exactly. Cross promotion, yep. you know, hit them wherever they may be on their phone and their email. And, um, you know, I think you can use your different vehicles to help each other. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, and thank you for helping me grow my social following. My pleasure. <laughs> and give you guys $500. Um, absolutely. Okay. Use that hashtag small biz love. Okay, so what channels deliver uh, more blog visits, visitors, email, or those RSS feeds? So I'm gonna pitch you against your yeah, so your competitor. <laughs> you know, I don't know specific numbers, but I think the key here is you really want to use both. Mm -hmm. You know, because it really comes down to your reader or your your customer. You know, how do they prefer to get your messages? How do they prefer to read? Yeah. You know, um, and for those of you who don't know RSS, it stands for Real Simple Syndication. And so if you have a blog um, and you're putting out multiple posts, you know, uh, what it does is allows you to get out there in apps or yes. news feeds so that if someone's interested in your particular business or area of business, yes your block can get out there in a simple way to digest. Um, you know, it gives you a little blurb about what your article is about and pushes them to your site. Yeah. Uh, you can do kind of the same thing in email where you are giving them a little rundown of your recent blog posts. Mm -hmm. Or if you post once a week, every time you make a post, you can send them an email and say, hey, I just made a new blog post, come check it out. And so you, you wanna use those in tandem to really drive those visitors back to your site. Um, because I personally like to get that stuff in email, but perhaps Heather likes to get it on an app where she's got all of her favorite news stories. Or I do blogs. actually, yes, <laughs> that's, he's totally right. Exactly. I'm a news junkie. <laughs> you, know, you know, and they're both pretty simple tools. Yes. And so take advantage of them both. And that way, just like you're using social to pro promote email and you're using email to promote social, you want to use your RSS to promote your site. You want to use email yes. to promote your site. And so just, it's an easy way to capture people in their preferred, another personalization key. Right. Give them, you know, your information in the way they want to receive it. I like that. And that really goes not just for email, but for any communications channel. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of ways to reach people. So, you know, getting to know your customer you know, or giving them the option is yes. really the key. Yeah. Great, okay, so um, there are a lot of marketing campaigns that you can be running at the same time. Um, we were talking about segmenting, so having different marketing campaigns for different audiences. What are the must-have email marketing campaigns? Sure. Yeah, so um, you're getting started in email. Yes. You know, you're asking people for their email address. Um, you're, you're getting a little bit personal. You know, you're, you're, you want access to their inbox, which yes. can be very personal for some people. So I think the key there is, um, one of the key campaigns is a welcome email. Okay. It's very simple to get started um, with any of these. Uh, even if you're using your own personal email um, to communicate, you know, someone signs up on your, at your cash register with their email address, don't leave them hanging. Let right. them know like, hey, one, I got your email address. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your purchase. Thank you for signing up. Whatever that may be, um, it just gives them a sense of, oh, confirmation. Yeah. Okay, they got my email address. And then I think the second piece to that welcome email is tell them how often you might be reaching out to them. Right. And what to expect in that. Um, Coming email. In that com yeah, right. exactly. You know, you'll hear from me once a month. You'll hear from me once a week. It just kind of gives them like a sense that you care about yeah. um, their inbox, that you thank them for like, hey, this is a big step. Yes. This is a huge step. You're allowing me into your life. Um, so let me tell you what to expect from me, you know, and that you really thank them for their business and the opportunity. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I think the second one I would recommend is something like a... Um, a happy birthday message. Oh, okay. It's yeah. actually one of the highest um, emails that gets opened. You know, it's another easy way to personalize when you ask them to sign up, say, 
you know, give us your birthday. birthday. You don't have to ask for the year, so you're not asking their age. <laughs> right. That's a bit personal. But just ask for the day and the year and say, you know, we'll day send you a birthday gift. Yeah. And that can be a simple 5% off. That can be, it could even be as simple as like just acknowledging their birthday. Mm -hmm. And that's like, wow, you know what? They really care about me. You know, they know my birthday. They're sending me a note. It makes you feel good. Think about, you know, if you're signed up on Facebook and you have people from high school saying happy birthday to you, you know, it, it makes, feels good. It feels really yeah. good, you know? And, you know, yeah, I haven't talked to you in 25 years, but, <laughs> you know, just acknowledging my birthday, you know, it makes you feel a little warm inside. And right. I think it's the same thing, you know, uh, you're more than just trying to get them to buy something. Right. You know, it's like, hey, thanks for your business. Happy birthday. Maybe give them an offer. And, um, you know, okay. it's just that little personal touch makes you feel good. Yes, yes. That's a good one. Okay, so we've got welcome email, birthday emails. Those yep. are good. Those are my two go-tos. Awesome. Okay, well, uh, thank you guys for joining us again and spending your lunch with us or your brunch. Um, remember, again, we to expect our email on Monday about our Small Biz Love Campaign. And like John was saying, we've really tried to give you a few ways to enter that however you prefer. So either you can enter that using your hashtag Small Biz Love on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you prefer, or um, follow the link in our email. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you again next Friday. Thank you, John, so much for your advice. I'm so happy to be here. Thank All right, you. see you next Friday.